Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Pre-Chef's Table Talk. My name is Kylie and I'm your host, and today I have a guest named Marta Rochas. Marta is the front of house manager in the Grand Hotel Birmingham. She's also the founder of 300 Hospitality. It's a very exciting and dynamic Instagram page, and you can find her doing a lot of comic relief work, but also in a very cheerful and positive way. Today, we're going to be talking about talents and hospitality, and we're going to talk about how we hire, groom, and value the people that we work with so that we can awake their true potential while working in our business. I can't wait to share this conversation with you. I prepared my drink, and I can't wait to see you later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is so funny because I was thinking, all right, I'm going to have to speak now. And then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the question was for me to show my passion, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Martha, we just met on Clubhouse about a week ago and um, basically I saw your passion in the people uh, working in hospitality just basically by stalking you so <laughs> um, all right yes yes I'm a bit of a stalker so yeah I'm so yeah Kylie <laughs> I'm very happy that we met on Clubhouse and I recently just started an Instagram page which is called 300 Hospitality uh, which I've been pouring my heart out and I call it 300 hospitality because to be honest with you, I used the term 300 too many times on a daily basis because that's how I feel. I feel like I've been committed to hospitality 300%. And every time I speak with my team members or the guidance team and we're on a meeting, I always say like, we need to do this 300%. We need to commit to this 300%. Let's do this. Let's call this guest 300%. So because I'm always saying 300%, even my, my colleagues, they come to me and they are like, when I say something, they're like, yes, yes, let's do this 300%. I know that you're gonna say that. So I think I was, I wanted to choose a name for my Instagram page. And this was the one that I wrote down and sounded more me because it is, it is me. I give 300% on everything I do. So hence the 300% Instagram page where you literally can see what I am doing in hospitality, what every each of us is doing and what it represents. And I put some fun into it and also some education. So yeah. It's definitely really fun. Um, I really enjoy your post and you're very consistent and, and always making me laugh. Post after post, it makes me laugh all the time. I love the uh, karaoke sessions as well because I sing a lot with you. <laughs> Good. I'm glad that you love it. I hope I know other people do too. Also, and and you know, it's a small community. I just started. I have 400 and something followers, but I feel like those followers really understand me and are there to learn. And I receive daily messages saying, "Look, I really like what you're doing. Thank you for posting this. It's really interesting." And that's why I keep on doing it. And I hope it grows and I reach as many hospitality colleagues as I can. I'm curious, what made you, uh, when did you start this and what made you start 300 Hospitality? I started the page uh, in the end of February. And I've always been dedicated to hospitality and I've always knew that this was what I wanted to do work in hotels. So since my family, basically all of them work in hotels, my mother, my all of my aunts, now we got my brother who is 10 years younger than me in hospitality also, he works for Sheraton. Um, I got into hospitality and it was very clear for me what I wanted to do when I was young. Recently, since I've given so much of myself to the hotel world and the hotel industry, I, I've decided that I kind of wanted to leave my footprint in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm now navigating into the industry, now trying to let people know what I know, share experience, let them share them with me, meet people like you and share some knowledge and yeah, kind of leaving a footprint in the industry since I'm dedicating so much of my life to it. 
I want to say thank you on behalf of the industry. You're really a truly a gem and a really good find. Oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. This is this is me. Yeah, what you see on the page is exactly what you will get if you were my colleague or if we would cross in the streets, maybe I would be singing and saying hello to you because this is exactly who I am. I love it. I love it. So Marta, you mentioned that your your family is all <laughs> hospitality like they've worked in hotels and stuff is um how did you decide that you wanted to start it because you watched it growing up or I mean you know it could yeah anything, but... I guess I guess it was due to hearing all of these crazy stories my mother and my aunt would be telling each other uh and saying, you know what, we got this guest today, this happened. And I started thinking, well, I want to please guests also and make them wow stories. And I'm sure I can be good at that. So I also wanted to prove my family that I was as good as them. <laughs> and the stories, really, I really liked everything that would come from my families on their work side. And they showed that they really love what they're doing. So I think I, my thought was, why not? And since I was early in school, I told my friends, well, this is what I want to do. And they were all like, oh, my God, you already know what you want to do. I'm so jealous. <laughs> like I was going to be a hospitality, I don't know, queen or something. So, yeah, I think I discovered it very early due to my family. And now, I mean, my partner is also from the industry. And as I said before, we just got our brother into the hotel industry. So... <laughs> I guess it's in it's in our blood. It's in our blood. Yes. Okay. Yes, we hear that a lot. Actually, I think it's very infectious. It's almost genetical. That you know, um, I, I find that a lot of our families, myself included, my family is also in hospitality. We do FMB, but um, yeah, it, it just runs in your blood. It, you can't get rid of it. It's like um, it's like it's meant to be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then. And then also I got the expression, you, have you heard blue blood? Because it's from people that have worked in Ritz Carlton. So we say that we bleed blue. Um, and that was also <clears throat> very interesting to hear that and to read when I read the Ritz Carlton book, The New Gold Standard, um, which by the way is amazing. Yes. Um, and yeah, and I have to say there's a quote in that book that I will never forget. It's right in the beginning that the author says he was in a rich Carlton and he crossed someone and he heard the employee saying, the answer is yes. Now, what's the question? So I thought that that's really, I mean, that's really my motto. And that's why I love Rich Carlton, who I started with. And I'm very glad for them because they have the right culture. And nowadays you have so many companies that they say they follow the culture and we are a people culture and we put people first but then you're going to you go to their hotels and it doesn't work quite that way so i'm glad i got to start with with the rich carlton and i'm glad it, it was such an amazing school that's such an amazing story um okay so i have to say recently i think a few days ago, you started a little campaign and uh, you were talking about interns. And I think you invited a whole bunch of your interns in your yes. previous hotel to share their stories of their internships. So that's where I found that, okay, this lady over here really, really wants to groom and to nurture the people who are stepping into in the industry. But can you tell me what inspired you to start with interns? Yes, so, you know, in my previous hotel, <laughs> the director, they, he called me baby mama because I was always taking care of everyone. Um, and I think I have this, my, my experience in my internship really shaped my future and how I grew in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I, what I want is for everyone to have their experience like I had mine. So mine was going to Dubai knowing nobody there at 21 years old uh going to a country that I really had no clue about of course you read what you read but then when I got there people were so, they were so warm 
my welcome was amazing and I was working giving 300%, but they were also giving 300% back. And I really had a great experience because they were taking care of me. So I want everyone to have that experience also and to finish their internship and really think, wow, this is really what I want or this is not what I want, but at least to know and to grow and to find out what you want because it's your time, it's time that you're putting into, you're giving your all supposedly. And I think it, we shouldn't, we really should take care of the interns because they might bring new ideas, they might let us know that sometimes what we do is not always right. That's why I really nurture them and my director was calling me the baby mother because I really like to take care of them and to point them and guide them in the right direction. That's, that's amazing. Um, I resonate with that a lot because I was also known as the mom of front office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the trainees come under me um, because I was the rooms trainer back then and and I, I took care of all our interns as well so yeah I, I completely understand what you mean by that and for me it's also very fulfilling when you see that they have grown from the first day until the last day and you yeah. see how much they've grown in three to six months it's very inspiring to see like you know actually if you provide a place with good environment you provide the people with the right resources the right yes definitely and, and also the trust that we got to give them right because they come in with zero experience but like you know we got to trust them and you know break their falls whenever we can right but it's also a lesson for us as managers or people who are leading the industry i feel yeah i feel like we need to take care of them like they were 100% full-time employees, but we also need to have in mind that they are learning and they are looking up to us. So I was always, I'm always very transparent from day one, from orientation. Usually when I go and say hello to all of them and I tell them exactly what I want and exactly what they will get from me. And I think setting that and giving that first impression is very important. Um, because they will then see, oh yeah, she spoke about this, he or she is doing it. So in majority of my orientations, I would say, look, like hospitality is like this. One day you might see me welcoming the biggest CEO of the biggest company the other day, or after half an hour, you will see me helping a housekeeping lady cleaning a room because this is what it is. So I'm setting the example and telling them straight what they can get from me and what they should be doing also. And that's quite good. And I think also we can kind of um, show them what they are going to get from this internship. Because I was just speaking with one of my colleagues and she told me that she was getting a lot of internship requests, mm -hmm. uh, but they were only internships about <clears throat> a month or a month and a half. And we were like, well, what can you learn from a month and a month and a half in an internship? Barely nothing. And then these schools are asking for internships as an assistant general manager or a director of operations intern. And I do understand that now everyone wants to grow quite fast, but that's not really how they will get it. So I think we also need to be very clear on that and set the tone with the schools and with the interns. Yes, you will get there, but maybe not being an assistant GM intern. Maybe you should put your hands on department or any, anything that will give you more knowledge. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about that. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I, I know where you're coming from. I think maybe the word internship for them then is not realistic. Maybe it's more like a shadowing, right? Like it's just like what yeah. does a general manager do in a week? And then again, then you don't need a whole month to do that. It's if you're really yeah. just a shadow and you're just going to walk around with the general manager um, and see what he does from top down perspective, then you really don't need a month to do that because the general manager spent the last 15 years to 20 years, you know, grooming himself to become a <laughs> manager for a reason, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's 
a really important thing to set the tone right. But what do you think about new people? Like when you hire someone, how do you how do you ascertain or like you know who's the right person to hire? Oh gosh, this is such a huge thing for me. I've been battling with hiring since I've started interviewing people, which was many years ago. Um, so I have to be honest with you. This is something that I struggled in the beginning and only quite recently I've learned kind of the right formula, but I don't think you ever will have the right formula for hiring. Um, in the beginning I was, so I would, I would, I was coming from the Rich Carlton and I was kind of, all right, so let's see CVs. I want to see big brands or big names on their CVs. And I would interview people that usually had a background in what I was looking for, that had work in great big companies. And I wasn't getting what I was looking for. And then I had um, a training session with Marriott called Foundations of Leadership. And I have asked uh, the speaker, all right, so how do I hire the right people? Because I'm struggling a bit because then I've, I've hired this amazing people. They come with them, an amazing CV and cover letter. But then, and they, they are these people that they say, oh my gosh, I'm very excited to do this. But then when they actually come to work, they're like, no smile. Their backs like this and they're like, hello, welcome. How are you? So I, I was definitely not looking for this because that's not what I represent. And that's not even the vibe that I, it comes to when you're interviewing with me. But anyway. So he told me that, uh, Marta, you know what? You will never be 100% that's right, that this person that you are hiring will commit and will do whatever they say in an interview because yes, you can say whatever you want. Um, but if you look for the right attitude, maybe you'll start getting a bit better on who you're choosing. Mm -hmm. So recently, after many years of the same mistake of looking at the CV, I started looking at attitudes. And I have to tell you, I am so happy with my team right now. So when I'm doing an interview right now, yes, of course, I look at the CV. But if I could, I swear to God, I would interview everyone that comes along because some people, yeah, they're not from the area or they're not from the department that you're hiring to, but if they come to an interview and they're like, you know what, Marta, I don't know opera, my past is food and beverage, I have never worked in a reception, but this is really what I want. I'm sure I will go well with the team. I will dedicate myself 300%. I used to do this for guests. I like to wow them. I will be like, oh my God, music to my ears. Yes, let's hire you. <laughs> um, so yeah, right now I'm very happy with my team. I've hired people with no reception experience and no opera experience, but what the hell, we're going to hire them because we can train them. And if they have the right attitude, like Simon Sinek says, you don't hire for skills, you hire for attitude. Yes. If they have the right attitude, then that's fine for me. I don't mind spending hours training them. If I can then go home and be relaxed thinking, all right, so they're there. I can go home and enjoy a movie on Netflix or speak with Kylie. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have to say again, look, you're my girl. You like Simon Sinek as much as I do. <laughs> I do <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yes, I do. And sometimes I'm, I'm a bit like, oh my God, they think I am a fictionator. I'm such a cliche because I like him, but it's, oh, it's his what it is. <laughs> oh my God, I'm such a big fan. Like, I think he is so, so smart. And that's so, so attractive, you know, in that sense. Like, I can't stop listening to his podcast. It makes me happy, actually. <laughs> the same, the same, the same for me. And the same, my call, I have colleagues also that we're kind of a club fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can all be fangirls together. Yeah. I have to recommend another one, though. There is this guy who, uh, his name is Will Gadara. He's also somebody that I'm a big fan of. And uh, you can find his podcast on the Welcome Conference from last right. year and he interviews all these people from hospitality uh, a lot of them are from restaurant backgrounds but the stories they share amazing you will love it Marja go go check it out I'll send you a link <laughs> all right I will thank yeah. you um 
Okay, yes, I, I do believe in hiring for attitude as well. And a lot of times, uh, you're, you're right. You know, we, we practice for our interviews, right? We say the right things at the right time and we prepare the stories. I know they're going to ask me, what have you done in your previous role, right? So I prepare the stories yeah. at the right time. Um, but how do you then ascertain the attitude? I mean, you know, it's a maybe half an hour meeting with a person. Yeah, but I guess you can clearly see, I mean, I, you, when you get into a room, you kind of let your vibe out, right? And when you're speaking and I can clearly see, I mean, this might be something that many people go against, but in the five minutes that I'm interviewing someone, majority of the times, yes, I had times that I wasn't sure, but majority of the times I can say, all right, we're going forward or no, this is a no from me um because they're coming they're smiling they're saying you know what i'm kind of nervous because i've this is not my area but i really want this job and all right so why do you want this job and sometimes it's even good to give them a problem to solve uh for example you know i have this this problem in front office where guests are not really happy when they're coming and giving their credit card upon check-in or guests are not really happy because there's not a doorman at the door, what would you advise for us to do? And sometimes even if they're not from the area, you can see even things that you hadn't think about. And that's like, wow, maybe I should think about this. Yeah. So give them problems. If it's, if I'm hiring for a higher position, I would say definitely I will be a bit more demanding and sometimes I would even ask for a small presentation or come and let's go and inspect a room, let's go and to the lobby and tell me what you would change or what do you see wrong right now. So I really like to interact. I don't want, and even nowadays it's, well, in the good places, it's rare that, rare that you find an interview who is like, all right, so, Tell me what you've done in the last two years. Tell me how you feel. Tell me la la la. Nowadays, we try to do it in a conversational tone like we are doing here. And I think that's good also. Um, so yeah, I've, the last team I hired, they came and I can tell you they were all smiling basically. And they showed me the right attitude and their willingness. And I was sure they were able to do it. And I'm sure they are a great team. We were about to open a hotel two days before we couldn't. So let's hope that this time, May 17, we will be able to open and then I can give you more feedback on my amazing team. I would love to see them on your, <laughs> on your Instagram as well. I'm sure you will put them yes. on there and feature your team, your 300% team. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> um, okay, I, I really like what you you. you spoke about like giving a real life scenario um i think hiring practices have to change out of the traditional ways of really just being a conversational one a live practice would actually show the competencies or even like the way a person would think or, or how observant a person is which is very important to our industry very important to the job that we have um you know and and just by talking to somebody we can't tell a lot of times i feel yeah, that's a really good tip. I hope you guys learned something from Marta. <laughs> I hope too. Um, okay, so let's talk about then grooming people. I, I think um, when we talk about, you know, hiring is only the first step, right? Uh, what are some ways you feel is important to groom a team? Um, I would say being very, I've always been very present with my team so I'm a people's person and I have no problem dealing with whatever comes along whenever you are whenever you have your own team and as I said before I'm very transparent and very clear from day one for whatever I want and whatever I want them to do uh, when I'm hiring I always reinforce teamwork I always reinforce that Sometimes they might need to go and help housekeeping or f &B or the guy at the pool who knows this is hospitality. So they have to be prepared for that. And that also gives the opportunity of the person, of the candidate to say, all right, this is not really what I want. So I'm going to back out. Um, 
and being clear from day one has also helped me and set the tone, as I said before, for what I am expecting from them. And whenever I see my team doing something wrong, I really use the one minute management rule. And this is kind of, I don't wait for that monthly review to tell the person, you know what, when you are at the desk, you're always looking down and at the computer, you need to stand our guests, go out outside of the desk, face the lobby, engage with the guests. So I really say something at the time and I don't wait for it. So they also have a time to improve. And I guess nurturing and being the baby mama has helped me a lot. Uh, listening to what they are saying and to what they're not saying, their body language, how they react when someone comes that's not from their department or someone that you've heard, they might not have a great connection. If you are attentive to this, you will be able to then crack the nutshell and be able to get the information that you need from them and even on the one-to-ones then when you're when you're speaking with them you can you can realize many things so I guess nurturing always be there for them you know not being sit down at the office many times I mean I if you see me in the office that's a rare thing like I will go there at the end of the day to do the admin and sometimes I'll be like I cannot um, you'll find me many times in the lobby with my team going to the hotel facilities. I think being present is really the key. And I was reading in a comment yesterday in a Facebook group, someone that said, oh, my team said to my director that I'm not very present, that I spend a lot of time in the office. So this is really something that we do not want to hear about ourselves as a leader, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, I completely agree with that as well. Like, you know, because <laughs> I think as a leader, you know, they, they need to see you there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I have nothing against people being at the office or being at the computer, but not in, for example, not in my area, which is operational and you need to be there with everyone checking in and checking out and complaints and everything happened. There's an elephant in the lobby, the chandelier is coming down, things that happen, you know. So you need to be there to support your team, to stop the elephant, to stop the buggy coming <laughs> into the lobby. Everything is going on. And yeah, you want to be there, especially oh when, you're, when your general manager asks you, so what happened? They wanted an elephant in the lobby. Yes, they did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're, making so, yeah. me miss, you're making me miss the operations life. Really, I love it. I love, love it. Yes. It is. It is. It is. Once you start in it, then when, when you start growing, it is yeah. quite like you stop doing shifts and you do the nine to five, which is never nine to five, but it's like, um, but then you even miss shifts because it's like something's happened in the morning, something happened in the evening, in the night shift, in, who knows? And it's quite interesting. I, I think uh, it's always very interesting. Um, the both of us are FO, like front office background. Um, yeah, FMB my blood, but front office background professionally. And, you know, I, I just miss the buzzing of the lobby being like, oh my God, there's so many people. And like, you know, next and the next person, the next complaint, you're running around the hotel. It's always so exciting. And I think, you know, um, there is this, if, if a manager can show that they are committed and they're solving problems and they're fighting the fire together with the team, you know, I think it also brings the team together they're willing to fight together with somebody who, who is leading the team in the same way. And yeah, and, yeah. Oh, that's definitely. So and oh, when I, when I moved from the Ritz Carlton Dubai to the one in Portugal, so people didn't know me of course, but I was used to, I was used to dealing with complaints a lot. And uh, I started like someone, I, you can be in the back office and you would hear guests that wanted to speak with the manager and I would come out out of the back office curtains like yes I'm here tell me I will solve your problem and then like after I don't know two times of a guest wanted to speak with the manager everyone would come to me like well can you deal with this can you deal with that blah, blah, blah. and then we all started learning and laughing and yeah it is it is great it's really a great environment that I totally I mean, everyone should work in hospitality, I guess, at least once and experience their, those crazy moments, yeah. one of a lifetime. Um, 
I, I, I love that. And I also want to ask you, how, how do you empower your team to become a leader in the future? I mean, apart from mimicking, because we can learn and observe, but how do you empower your team then? Yeah, so as we spoke and you just mentioned, setting the example, definitely, um, but also pushing them. And I had to learn this um, and force myself to learn this and, because I, I had always a lot of my plate and I wasn't delegating. Mm -hmm. So someone, my, my director is always saying, you need to delegate more, otherwise you're going to collapse one day. And that's really what I started to do. And when you see people want to learn and you give them, all right, I will give you this to do. I need, I have this goal. And by the end of the month, you will need to give me this back. You really see the shine on their eyes. Like when I was an, an intern or when I was a receptionist, oh my God, she's giving me some responsibility. All right, let's do this. And then you focus only on that and you feel like the queen of the upsell or the queen of the memberships <laughs> or whatever task that you delegate. Um, so I think giving more responsibility, but also following up very close, very closely with their work. Mm -hmm. um, even sometimes if you don't, give them new things to do, you go and ask them, all right, have you made this week requisition? What was the budget? How much did we spend? Um, what are the number of enrollments we did today? But why did we did so low if we had 50 check-ins today? And just don't let them do, okay, you're responsible for this, but still you need to follow up and to be present. And I'm also very well known to, <laughs> this is not, I don't buy people with food, but I, I'm also very well known to bring a lot of things to the office, like sweets and pizzas and, oh, yeah. I don't know, teddy bears, whatever, whatever. Uh, but it's because I really like it because, I mean, I'm always seeing this, just yesterday I saw something that, that was saying, our managers will not buy us with pizza, well, mine will for sure, <laughs> not just because when <laughs> Who doesn't like to have pizza? I mean, oh, yes, I'm working God. hard. So if I can have pizza or sweets or chocolates, please yeah. tower me with chocolates. I'll be fine. <laughs> so I just bring them because I think they bring so much joy. <laughs> I'm not it's trying to buy anyone. Gone. I swear, I swear. It's always gone. Really... No, no, no. Trust me, I, I have the same thing. I really do this. I, I'm just laughing because you had one post where you where you said, um, how do you convince somebody to work for you? And then yeah. you have this piece of paper that says candies. And when I saw <laughs> that, I just laughed because I remember I would do that. And I was like, okay, so you get growth opportunities and, and, and I will feed you really, really well. I will feed you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like, right? It makes it's me for me, it's the happiness, cherry on top of the cake. <laughs> really made me laugh but um yes i i do agree um with that as well um what about recognition 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 is something it's really one of the key values that i really want to reinforce in my team and i think again we go through the to the culture of the companies and again a lot of companies are promising to recognize their employees, but I know many companies that when their employees were leaving or resigning, when they were asking, so what do you think we missed? The majority of them would say recognition. Although we do have 300 ways of recognizing our team, we're missing in that somehow. How is this possible? This is something that we need to, to see. and. For example, right now in my hotel, we set a goal in my team, me and, and my manager, that we need to give at least one recognition card per week, me and her, who will attribute at least one. It doesn't need to be to our department, of course, the, the more the better to our department, but it can be also to other departments, but at least one needs to be there and we need to recognize them and uh, again, have this employee of the month or employee of the trimester, which I always hope it's from my department. Uh, and we fight for that, of course. Um, and um, we had assistant slash intern of the trimester with the employee of the trimester. Uh, 
Uh, I think bringing them to executive meetings to recognize them or when you want and when you're giving this card, when you want to recognize someone, don't do it just you and the person. Either go to a lineup or in an executive meeting and explain the situation and why is this person being recognized? Because that's how everyone always did with me and it went out well, I think. So I, that's how, what I want to do with, with other people. And this is very important for the culture of the company and people who are like, oh my God, that's so boring. I don't want to do that. Oh, here we go again, la la la, clapping. Th those are not part of my team, no. I mean, I don't care. I'm going to write the first class card. I'm going to recognize it, even if it's not from my department, because we really need to do that. I mean, who doesn't like to be recognized, really? If you're giving 300%, for sure, you would like to have a, at least a tap on the back and say, good, thank you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, gratitude, attitude. That's my, yeah. that's one of my hashtags nowadays, gratitude. That's and, nice. Um, because I think recognition comes from gratitude as well. When you're, when you're grateful for something that, you know, somebody's given you 300% and you recognize it and you are grateful for it, um, it needs to come from inside, really. It really needs to come from inside. A lot of times I've seen some managers or some bosses you know they they pick their favorites and they always give the recognition cards to their favorites but without anything much sometimes it's just like good work exclamation mm -hmm. mark but you don't have an issue or you know you're not you're not um it, it also kind of backfires on you right because then the rest of your team will be like you know what we're never going to get it anyway so they will yeah. give you your 300 percent because you don't genuinely recognize them and that's so important i remember the days where we have the clap 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 and nobody really cares about the recognition um mm. we do care about the prize though because it's 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 it used to be monetary prizes for us so we get like what three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars we get you know <clears throat> um eight months in a row of recognition and stuff like that right but you're excited for the money but then it's really hard for you to feel like you're recognized um, if the culture it does not take gratitude attitude very seriously, I feel. Definitely, I think you're really right. And recognition is definitely one of the most important things for an employee. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any incidents where like, you know, someone in your team is not performing and you, you can't, you can't, you know, like, you can't read them. How would you help them in that way? How would you value and help them? Um, you know, people make mistakes. And what I tell um, my managers is that, yes, a mistake was done. Uh, but let me speak with the person and I'll give you feedback after. So I really... What I'm going to do is that behind closed doors, I will speak with the person that didn't have the right attitude and I will figure out why that happened and how and why did the person think about another solution. And then they, the follow-up has to be really, you really need to be on top of the person to see if it happens again. I have to say, I don't think I ever, in my life had encountered someone that wasn't, that was a poor performer or that was doing something wrong many times. I'm very thankful. And I think it's also because I have worked basically with the Ritz Carlton majority of my life and people are totally committed. Um, but yeah, mistakes have happened. I, I just close them and behind closed doors, I speak with them. And usually what I recommend also for someone who is becoming a team leader or a manager is in front of others, you defend them like they were their baby tigers. And then behind closed doors, you can tell them whatever you want, whatever you feel like, if the mistake was huge, if you want to, I don't know, tell them whatever you want, but in front of other departments and in front of other people, you just, you have their back because you are their manager, that's what you're there for. And then you will speak with them when you are uh, alone with them. And 
yeah, that's kind of what I recommend if someone is not acting properly or the way that you would personally recommend. And yeah. You are a star manager. Where <laughs> oh my God. I you know, I can find a 300 class. hospitality people are commenting and saying like, oh, can you be my manager? Please? You know, like, yeah, sure. <laughs> can we work together, please? <laughs> I think we've all yeah. so much fun. <laughs> I mean, it's not all fun and games, but it really oh, depends on how, what the attitude you bring to the table, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it's, it's, it really matters because the worst thing you could do is actually to not support your team then how can they trust you as a manager yeah it's yeah. a really really good like um thing i think um where we started our careers give it like more than 10 years ago right yeah the, the management style were a lot more traditional definitely yeah right <laughs> and we have we have seen like i guess i'm sure you have seen your share of the good and the bad um and coming from i think maybe my part of the world where in asia we also have traditional on top of traditional kind of mindset uh it, it was actually quite challenging but but then i realized that you know then it it it's up to us right it's up to the next generation up to us to change the style because we know what's working and what's not going to work on us and if it doesn't work on us it wouldn't work on the next generation <laughs> right so yeah it's up to us to change things from here um great i want to ask you maybe one question who do you think are the right people what do you need to have as values as yeah as values i'm not going to talk about skills i'm going to talk about values what are the right values a person need to bring into this business if they're thinking about working for hospitality um i think you need to be very resilient which is the word of 2020 and maybe 2021 <laughs> i don't know you need to be resilient and i think we we all in hospitality are and that's why i say in the beginning every month in orientation when i speak with the new trainers and welcome them i think that's why i say you might find me cleaning a bathroom and you might finding welcome mark zuckerberg because it is what it is i'm like this and i think our industry really asks for it and also be very positive open and flexible again for this kind of situations and if you are if you are very keen on smiling, there will be some extra points with me at least. <laughs> um, and also bring good environment to the team. And mostly this is, I, I always ask this on an interview, how good are you with teamwork? How good are you working as a team? Because yes, I understand that um, you want to grow individually, but if you don't do, and if you don't take action on your daily tasks as a team, things are not going to go and not going to work well. So I, I really focus on teamwork and not working individually. And I'm very clear from the one, what I want and what I, I want guests to come and to understand that we really are a team. I want other departments to understand that if they say something to one of us, the message will cross along and we will all be informed. And that's one of the main focus that I really like to reinforce with everyone and every company that I work with. Teamwork really makes the dream work, although it's a cliche, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, great. Um, any tips for new managers? Um, I think be very humble and pay attention to what your team is saying and what they are not saying. And I can tell you also that I think I'm the way I am because everyone that I was crossing paths with, I always had this philosophy of taking 5% of this person. So I will take 5% of them of what I like and even what I don't like. All right, so this means that I see 
someone doing something that I don't think it's quite correct. And then I see the repercussions of that. And I'm like, okay, this is something really that I don't want to do. So I want to keep myself apart from those kinds of attitudes and let's not do that. So because I've been taking 5% of many people right now, uh, I think I am, I am quite good in the in this industry, and I can I can do something like, for example, the three hundred hospitality page, and I I think that's why I've been having receiving awards or succeeding in this industry, um, and also me being quite humble, and again, it comes from my family and from the internship I had and the way it helped me grow in this industry. And yeah, I think being a manager really means being there for your team and just focus on teamwork. And I have so many things to say. <laughs> I could speak for hours about being a manager, but yeah, uh, it's just about being humble and being there for your team, basically. Thank <laughs> you so much for sharing that. I think this conversation really, I think it's brought out different angles, you know, like how do you work in this industry and how do you be a manager? How do you become an example? How, how do we hire? How do we groom a team? How do we build a team? Um, how do we recognize people? Communication is one, one thing I hear from you in synergy throughout you're always communicating transparency and it's always open communication and i think that is so important um one other thing i love is that you defend your babies um, <laughs> <laughs> yes that. yes yes definitely so with regards to my team they are like my baby tigers yeah you know, there was also one thing that my previous general manager was used to say that this was regarding the guest side he used to say that you know what Marta you have your heart is too big because I would go so big on compensation <laughs> and every time um I don't know I just I just really like customer service and I really like to deal with people that's why I've grown so much in the area and I really hope to leave my footprint here. So let's see. Great. So um, Marta, do you want to share one last thing with us? Anything that is uh, Martha says, na 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 na. Anything <laughs> like, like you're you're closing for today's session with us. Yeah, I just want to say. Uh, well, Marta just want to say to have fun, but most of all to follow your passion because this is my passion and if you find what you really like then this it will everything will come so naturally it's almost it's not but it's almost effort this i sorry effort effortlessly um it is like it, it comes out to me so just follow what you feel and i'm sure everything will go well and where can we find you if we're looking for you? Well, you can find my 300 Hospitality page on Instagram, which is called 300 Hospitality. Also, you can find me on LinkedIn through Marta Rocha, and you will find me there. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on Pre Shifts Table Talk today. I hope you had fun too. <laughs> Thank you, Kylie. Oh, I had a lot, lots of fun, and I hope. I hope you didn't fall asleep with all of my stories. Uh, yeah, oh. I had loads of fun. It was really nice to speak and connect with you. Likewise. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers with my tea. <laughs> and my wine. It's 9 p.m. here. I deserve it.